finally use the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, that is, the Word of God. My brothers and sisters, the Word of God. Amen? Let's give a hand to the Word of the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Here we have, use this. Here we have Paul explaining to us through the Scripture that we're not fighting human forces. That's important to understand if you want to be holy. Because our battle, it's not with our domestic church, which is our family. Our battle is not with our mom, our dad. It's not with our sisters. It's not with our cousins. Our battle is not in our workplace with our uh, boss or whoever is working with us, with our co-workers. Our fight is not with our students, our friends at school, college. It's not with our teacher, our instructors, no. It's not against human forces. It's not against your friends and parishioners of your parish. It's not against uh, the church itself, the priest, the pastor, the pope. It's not against human forces. But yet, the Bible says that we do have a battle, and it's against that dark world, that spirit world of darkness. That's very important to understand, my brothers and sisters. Because we are in war. And I'm not talking about Iraq. I'm not talking about Afghanistan. I'm talking about a spiritual war. And that spiritual war needs to be dealt with. We need to put the armor of God if you and I want to succeed in holiness. Amen? Now, this is not for the weak ones. This is not for the wishy-washy. This is not for the one that comes in and, and is testing and wants to see what it... No, this is for people that are convict, that has the desire to move in the Lord, to work in the Lord, to move hearts in the Lord, to make a difference out there. And you guys, you are the chosen ones. You are the ones that God is calling. So how important it is to pay attention to what God wants for us so we can give to the world. Amen? Amen. The desire to be holy. How powerful that is. And then the word starts by explaining us how important it is to put the armor of a good soldier if we want to be holy. And the first part that it, it, it tells us, it says, take truth as your bell. Ephesians 6.14. Take truth as your bell. Now let's, let's explain this a little bit. Out of all the armory, armor that the soldier had, well, the bell, the word starts with the bell. Why would the bell? See, that's important to understand. Why the bell? Why is this so important? Well, it happens to be that you can put on all the armor, maybe all the pieces of, of, of being a soldier, and yet, if you don't put the bell, man, when you go out to war, all that, the bread, the, 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 the breastplate, the, your helmet, everything is going to be loose. You need the bell to be tight. You need, you need the, the bell to be firm. You want to go out there firm and tight. Amen? Spiritually, the Lord is inviting us to be holy in the truth. And it starts by that, by living in the truth. Now, everybody out there, man, all the kids, especially young ones, everybody's seeking the truth. Everyone wants to know where the truth is at. They might not directly go, you know, where is the truth? But everybody's seeking the truth. As a matter of fact, all of us, we all are seeking the truth. And it doesn't matter how many years we have serving the Lord or being in the Lord, we are always wanting to be in the truth. Amen? Now, God is the truth. Jesus is the truth. Who believes that? Amen? Now, how important it is to understand that? Because one thing is just to say, well, yeah, Jesus is the truth, but do you really believe it? Do you really understand it? And if Jesus is the truth, and we are disciples of Jesus. We want to imitate Jesus. Amen? And Jesus is the one that in, in the Gospel of John, not one time, not two times, but seven times, he says, I am. And he describes himself. I am the bread of life. Uh, uh, I, I am the resurrection. Uh, I am the door. Seven times he says who he is. I am the light of the world. And one of the seven times, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
He is the truth. And if Jesus is the truth, you and I, we need to live with Him in the truth. Now guys, I said it wasn't going to be easy. You know that it's not easy to live in the truth. Amen? What is the opposite of truth? What is it? Lies, right? Opposite of truth is lies. The word of the Lord says that the father of all lies is Satan. Amen? We know that. Amen? That the father of all lies is Satan. Now, we understand that Jesus, our Lord, our God, is the father of all truth. Amen? Now, if you live in the truth, pay attention to this. If we live in the truth, then our father is who? God. Amen? If we live in the truth, who's our father? God. God. But if we live in the lies, who's our father? Ooh. Doesn't sound too good, right? But the reality is that every time we deny the truth, every time that we shy away from the truth, every time that we, we stop with lies and we want to live in the lies, we are saying, you know what, God, you're not my father. I have another father. We don't even mention his name, amen? The reality is to be holy, we need to live in Jesus Christ. Look what our catechism, our Catholic catechism says. On 2465, it says, the Old Testament attests that God is the source of all truth. Who believes that? Of all truth. His word is truth. His law is truth. His faithfulness endures to all generations. To all what? Generations. Now, that's important to understand. We are his generation. Huh? We are his generation. Not the Pepsi generation, but God's generation. Amen? We are his generation. And it says, his faithfulness endures to all generations. Since God is true, the members of his people are called to live in the truth. Wow. Let's give a hand to our, our Catholic church. The proclaiming the truth in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if we understand that, 2466 says disciples. Now, who says, who says that? Is a disciple of the Lord. Raise your hand. Who says who's a disciple of the Lord? You have to be sure. Who's a disciple? Who's a disciple? Huh? Oh, thank God everybody raised their hand. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because we're all disciples of the Lord. We all want to imitate Jesus Christ. Amen. And it says, disciple of Jesus continues in his word so as to know the truth will make you free. Amen. And that sanctifies. Amen? Amen. If you want to be free, and don't say, look, Rick, no, Enrique, mira, yo estoy libre, I'm free. Don't, don't go there. You and I know that we have certain chains, that we have certain uh, holdings on us. Yes or no? Yes or no? And the Word is inviting us. It is inviting us to live in the truth because if you live in the truth, it will set you free. And that is our goal. We want to be free, not in the world. We want to be free in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And that will sanctify us. That will make us holy. Praise God. And it continues by saying, to follow Jesus is to live in the spirit of truth. <laughs> whom the Father sends in his name and who leads into all the truth. To his disciple Jesus teaches that unconditional love of truth. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Actually, that's the word of the Lord. That's from the scripture. It says you have to say yes to what is yes and no to what is no. In other words, let's say yes to what is good and let's say bad to what is bad. Amen? Now, guys, you and I know we have struggles. It is hard to live in the truth. It is hard to live in Jesus. But the Lord wants authentic witness disciples of Him. And you and I, we need to, to be encouraged and to live day by day by His wisdom and by His light. We want to live in the truth.